right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. It's August 30th, 2022, and it's the end of the month. So I have to get back to typing the newsletter again. And uh, we're going to have another usual week of testing this out on YouTube, just building our library there. Uh, overall, though, we're going to keep all the crypto specific project information for the, the half that's for the subscribers. But we'll still talk about the macro news and how it, how it could affect things going forward. Now, this week was the, the most significant event this week was the Jackson Hole meeting and the commentary and Fed Chairman, Chairman Jerome Powell made some comments. And he talked about some pain ahead, right? But the main thing is that in interest rates will likely persist for some time. And this is what kind of sent markets away from this kind of like short rally and then down uh, quite, quite significantly, right? Uh, now we used to be 8% from the highs. Now we are like 15% from the highs, which is probably where we sh more like where we should be, right? So the whole rally was really on the basis that uh, the Fed would not raise interest rates as aggressively. Uh, remember last month, his comments were, let's look at the data and we'll step away and see how we should react. But now he's saying, actually, we're just going to keep raising uh, interest rates. And the market was like, eh, let's, let's uh, pull the capital back out. So basically, the market was pricing in uh, like a 50 basis point uh, increase next month. Now it's back to 75. And really, we might be almost in overcorrection territory if people keep thinking too hard about it. But there's an energy crisis in Europe going on. Inflation could be as high as 22% in the UK. We have like a climate crisis going on in uh, like Pakistan and China and uh, like the rivers are drying up in China. So basically there's a lot of uncertainty out there. And the, 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 the one thing with uncertainty is it causes people to take out money. So all the markets, whenever you don't know something's going to happen, money gets taken out. It sits back. It waits. Once there is certainty, people throw money back in the market. They allocate it to, you know, different areas, whether it's, um, like, uh, tech related, speculative related or value related. Uh, but right now uncertainty means money's pulled out, right? So that, that causes markets to go down and we'll go into crypto, uh, charts, uh, later on, but that's kind of setting the stage for this week and actually the next couple months really. Right. So we, we are actually likely going to be back to our lows, uh, given the statements that we've heard, which is what the market is pricing in right now. Right now, one other thing is, um, the data for America is still not bad. Job openings are 11.2 million. It's uh, nearly double the available workers that are unemployed, uh, well above the estimate. So basically, when you hear things like it's greater than expected, uh, what you have to be thinking of is, are you going to raise interest rates or not still, right? And then the thing that's weird about this is good news is bad news, because as you have good news, the likelihood that they're going to have to raise rates higher increases. So it's funny that people are like, oh, the economy is actually doing pretty good. Okay, tank the markets, right? That's exactly what you should be hearing because that's what everybody else is hearing. Just like crypto, you have narratives, you have stories that move prices. You have to figure those narratives out. The narrative in the stock market right now is interest rates and inflation. And if people think the data is looking good, that means they're going to raise interest rates more. That's what people believe at least, right? And that's what the market moves uh, in reaction to when they hear news like this. And there's also news of a new payment rail for the Fed. So basically right now there's a like 24 hour window. Um, well, it, it basically every overnight, uh, the Fed needs to settle whatever is on your ledger across all the banks in the United States. And when you're sending, uh, things internally, they settle that, you know, automatically, but basically it's a, it takes up, it takes about a day when you send money right now. And with this system, they're finally going into like an instant payment infrastructure. So that's coming as soon as next year. And um, obviously you use PayPal, you use crypto. Uh, they they all have uh, instant settlement, although PayPal is kind of more like acting as a intermediary. Uh, whereas crypto, it's like once you send it in crypto, it's yours. It, you, you have it in your wallet, right? Now there's increased reaction now from the government. Uh, one of the news uh, stories this week was FBI asking DeFi platforms you know, some of these DeFi platforms are anonymous. So who do you add? Do you like ping them on Twitter or go into their discord and say like, Hey, can you boost your security measures? But for the other larger DeFi entities, they of course, uh, have warned that there's vulnerabilities. 
uh, warn the, the investors, the, the participants of your ecosystems that there is danger there. Uh, also, we have Gary Gensler coming out, the head of the uh, SEC, saying the Security and Exchange Commission, saying that we're not going to treat crypto any different than we treat other securities or uh, regulatory um, like kind of entities, right? So that's also causing a lot of uncertainty, right? When you hear of regulation coming, always there's uncertainty. And then what happens is people take money off the table, right? Uh, but in reaction to all this stuff, Coinbase is launching a voter registration and education initiative. So Coinbase is actually investing money into helping people understand crypto and what they're getting into. And also to talk to your representatives, talk to people in Congress and in the Senate, just say like, hey, uh, crypto is something that everybody is really in favor of, right? If you vote against crypto stuff, um, it, it might actually, well, basically they want the, the public to educate their representatives of that. However, uh, if you're watching this video or honestly, like if, yeah, if you're reading the newsletter, you're probably way more uh, sophisticated than a lot of the members in Congress, right? I mean, just talk to your, uh, your grandparents about crypto and, and see what kind of a uh, response you get, right? Um, Tether has decided not to freeze Tornado Cash, which is uh, something people were very happy about. Uh, all these other, remember like uh, Circle, which is USDC, Infura, Alchemy, these APIs that interact with crypto, they all uh, blacklisted these wallets essentially. And now um, you're seeing a little bit of pushback and I'll, I'll go through this in the newsletter a bit, but basically there's this controversy is whether crypto is really decentralized or not, right? Uh, we also have Binance signing a uh, MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with the city of Busan. Previously, this was going to be with Terra uh, Binance has stepped in to take over and try to develop the city of Busan in, in Korea uh, to be uh, crypto friendly, crypto highly adopt, uh, sorry, increase adoption there, uh, make sure people have the me mechanisms to convert the fiat currency back to crypto, all that stuff. So this is a very interesting experiment. Uh, I, I think this is a better fit than El Salvador. Uh, El Salvador is trying to go all BTC, but um, you know if they focus on the oldest current currency and and buying Bitcoin, it's not really as sophisticated as saying like, here's a whole wide of uh, crypto apps, uh, Web3 apps that you can interact with your basic infrastructure. And uh, that, I think that's what Binance is trying to do with Busan. So it's a little more comprehensive, a lot more complicated. We also have Ava Labs getting into some sort of crypto conspiracy. Uh, there's like a crypto leaks, right? Instead of WikiLeaks. And basically the, the, the whistleblower uh, like had video of their law firm uh, saying that they're going to go against their competitors. Um, and basically Ava Labs is behind the mastermind behind that, you know, Avalanche token. And now, uh, you know, the, the CEO of Avalanche, the lawyer at Roche, they're saying like, this is all not real, but the videos are real, right? Cause he, he even said like uh, highly edited video clips are not presented with accurate context. So basically, um, there's some truth. There's some, uh, I guess you could say like, uh, liberties taken to make this as, uh, look, make avalanche look as bad as possible. Right. And then even in the newsletter, we talk about, uh, how to, um, like the, you know, during these moments, it's like actually great to have these hedging strategies where you can go, uh, pick a very similar project like Matic, for example, and go long Matic and then short Ava and then AVAX. And then basically you have like a spread where you, you, you should be profitable in theory, right? Um, but anyways, uh, this is a story that was like rocking crypto all week. Uh, that and like um, a lot of stuff with Vitalik Buterin this, this week as well. Um, I won't mention that uh, in this video. We also have FTX and Alameda. They're merging their VC operations, which is probably for the better. They're probably splitting deal flow and all that stuff. Now it's the same. And now Alameda CEO is Caroline Ellison. This name is going to be very famous from now on because Sam Trabuco or Trabaco or Tobacco or Tabasco, you know, people make fun of his name all the time. He's stepping down as the CEO of Alameda Research. And he has been uh, quite a big voice in the space because Alameda has been killing it. They've been doing everything correct, uh, market direction, huge purchases of uh, coins, probably taking your money, to be honest. Like if you, if you find a new DeFi app, uh, they're the ones probably trying to find the best way to make money from it. And they probably sell it before you do. So uh, even though you can respect them, they're probably the ones that are like extracting all the value away from retail investors. Uh, but just to kind of summarize, 
this is a huge fund merging with FTX, which is the biggest exchange, uh, or not the biggest exchange, but this entity will be huge. And uh, Caroline Ellison is now the CEO. So she'll be like a, a voice in the space now. Uh, Coinbase, FTX, and Binance, again, back to the regulatory things, uh, got uh, inquiries from Congress. Uh, because of the, what they, they say there's $1 billion of crypto fraud they're looking for. So they're going to have greater transparency with the data, the transactions. I'm sure there's going to be some pushback here from the exchanges, especially like Binance. They might say like, well, you can have our U.S. data, but you don't, you can't tell us what to do across these overseas, right? Uh, we also have a bunch of fundraising news. So basically, uh, Genesis and Galaxy raising another crazy fund. Um, I think they're just, you know, Genesis is trying to make back the money they lost, but the fund will be used for, uh, I believe, is it early stage stuff? Uh, I, I should have, uh, I think, well, I, I should have should have done more reading on exactly what type of fund it is. But we also have Reddit's uh, co-founder, Alexis, uh, also making a huge fund, 176 177.6. Um, I don't know why this number, maybe it's like the year America was founded, uh, or or maybe he was trying to do like some sort of play on the on the numbers. But anyway, like not a not a round number, 177.6. Also not a small number uh, because that's a huge um, raise. And Amoka's Japan entity, uh, a subsidiary, I should say, also raised 45 million dollars to invest in NFTs. Uh, we also have uh, this crazy uh, blockchain game, which I'll talk about in the newsletter. So I don't want to talk about it much too much. Talk about it here too much, which was an, a free mint. Uh, having these NFTs that are like, uh, let's see here, they are 12.5 Ethereum now each. And I believe one of our uh, subscribers, um, their, their friend at least, bought 80 of them. So that's worth $1.5 million right now. Obviously, if you try to sell them all, uh, it would probably uh, crash the floor quite a bit. Uh, we also have a Hook NFT, which is an options market for NFTs now. So I, I always love seeing these ideas being experimented on. You never know which one's gonna stick. Uh, and honestly, I don't think this is gonna stick either. But the, the concept of options is you write on a piece of paper at a certain date, what uh, strike price you, you, you agree on uh, taking an asset. So basically you, you're betting, uh, kind of leveraging up a bet that, that some asset is gonna be, let's say 10 Ethereum, right? Or you have the option to buy it at 10 Ethereum. And then if it goes to 15 Ethereum, you've made uh, five Ethereum on top, depending on like what the original price was, so obviously, but you, you make that spread above minus a premium. And that's exactly what doodles or not doodles, uh, hook is trying to do. And their example is with doodles. They have groupings of different NFTs because they're non fungible, right? You have to bet on a collection of them rather than, uh, each of them. Right. So that's kind of uh, what's, what is the, uh, the, the concept behind hook NFT. We also have Eminem and Snoop Dogg already performed. I think this art article is a little old now. They performed at the uh, Video Music Awards. Uh, is it still owned by MTV? I'm, I'm guessing it is. Uh, yep. And then um, that's like, again, a very mainstream audience seeing these apes uh, dancing and performing live. Uh, th this uh, whole, <laughs> I, this is so ridiculous that we're talking about this. Don't get me wrong. I, I think this is crazy. Um, we also have social media giant. I don't know why they say that. I, I just read it there. Uh, Meta posting, allowing you to post NFTs and other digital collectibles to Facebook. Obviously they're going for a marketplace play later, but they are trying to ease their way in. They don't want to have any antitrust lawsuits, obviously by allowing people to display them. And I think this is really what Coinbase NFT was trying to do, but nobody is really using Coinbase NFT. So basically um, Meta stepping in and this is like what really is, is, is painful to, to kind of do, right? Is like you see somebody else launch a product and nobody's really gaining traction on it. And then you, you have like the project in the pipeline, the same product essentially launching soon. Um, that's really painful as a like product manager or like a, a business deciding which uh, lines of revenue you're trying to do, right? So um, we'll see how this works. I, I think this is extremely broad because if you're using Coinbase NFT, most likely you have a familiarity with NFTs. If you're using Meta, uh, the percentage of users that know what, what to do with the NFT is gonna be quite small, but it will be interesting to see if uh, it gets widely adopted. If people start taking an interest in putting their profile picture as something that they purchased, right? And I think, uh, what is the other? Oh, Twitter was kind of the pioneer in this. People were putting their purchased NFTs on their profile picture. And that was like the cool thing to do, right? And it still is. I think people largely, like rarely put in their own photo anymore because they love putting their NFTs up. Um, anyways, moving forward, 
we also have an NFT rebound happening. And I will also talk about this in the newsletter, but essentially the Ben Dow, um, basically they were having a liquidation risk. There is all the all this Ethereum that's deposited or loaned because you can deposit an NFT and borrow against it, right? But if all the NFTs drop in value, you, they're gonna just take away the Ethereum or they're gonna sell the, the uh, NFTs at a very low price. And what happened was people started selling their NFTs seeing like, oh crap, there's gonna be a huge NFT dump soon. Let's get rid of our NFTs. And you saw all these crazy drops uh, across the board, even for blue chips. You saw, I'm just off the top of my head, like Azuki, clones, uh, doodles, going from the 10 Ethereum to the six Ethereum range. So down 40% within this period of time. Now they're kind of coming back up around the eight Ethereum, but obviously if Ethereum drops, you lose a lot more, but that's like still a 20% drop from this whole debacle, right? Or maybe NFTs are just losing their luster. Uh, either way, my point is there's a rebound happening, and that's because uh, Ben Dow implemented an APR of 80% now if you if you deposit uh, Ethereum for people to borrow. So that is kind of fixed-ish. Um, I don't know if this is a long-term solution because eventually Ben Dow uh, token is probably going to like keep falling from the inflation, right? So they're probably going to be like, oh, now here's a lockup, so you don't sell it. And then eventually they just got to fix the platform uh, in the event that NFTs move uh, a crazy amount, right? So overall NFT markets are looking much healthier. Like I said earlier, we have um, like Moonbirds was down to 12.5. Uh, now it's back to 14. Clones were like six down to six and now it's back to seven. Um, and then we have, you know, I'm just naming off blue chip stuff. Uh, <laughs> there's so many things now I can't keep track. That's why we have a meta program, right? Uh, but basically uh, a lot of these, yeah, loot used to be worth like so many Ethereum, but these things are kind of coming back down to what I think is like more realistic pricing. Obviously, these are NFTs are still crazy, uh, foreign concept to me. Actually, no, it's not. I, I've already explained how to how to play that market many times. Now, uh, let's go to the cryptocurrency section, I guess, where we talk about the overall market. It's been a down market again. The number one reason is from the Jerome Powell comments. Uh, the whole market is down, stock market's down and everything. Uh, Ethereum is down 5% versus, what I'm surprised about is Bitcoin is down actually more with 7%. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure why, I mean, it's very close obviously, but I don't know why Bitcoin is down more than the rest of the market. Solana, I think is actually at risk because of Aptos and Sui coming out which are uh, like kind of pretty much Solana. They have the same narrative as Solana, like, oh, we're super fast chains. A lot of the developers from Solana are moving over to Aptos. Um, and I'll show you in the newsletter eventually uh, that ecosystem is getting crazy. Like we, we, our fund is personally starting to invest in that ecosystem as well. And uh, Solana might actually um, kind of fade away if all the developers leave, right? So uh, we'll talk about it more in the newsletter, but I want to point it out. Uh, Dogecoin is obviously dropping a little more uh, because we'll talk about at the end of the video, um, Doja Chain is out. Uh, people are kind of flooding over there, but now that's dumping too. We also have Polygon actually even for the week. So Polygon outperforming the market, which is great. Um, and we also have Leo token, which is an exchange token. Let's just keep, I'm just doing kind of a quick overview of everything, anything I see. And um, all right, so yeah, we're gonna go through some specific projects this uh, in this the rest of the video. If you are, oh wow, Lido down 18. It did move up a lot though, so that kind of makes sense. And I don't know what this eCash is, but it is up a lot too. Oh, Evmos, holy crap, up a lot this week as well. Evmos, by the way, uh, for those of you who have been in the newsletter, we, we've, we've had this in our staking section forever. Uh, it's, I think, almost doubled um, from the airdrop. The airdrop was actually a lot of money. It was like 600 bucks, I think. So it's, uh, if, you, if you just like listen to this newsletter, you would have had a free $600 if you haven't gotten it, you can still go get it, by the way. And then you could just stake it and it just like has some crazy inflation. I've personally been cashing it to USDC because I don't think it could sustain, but apparently, you know, prove me wrong, right? Okay, so that's my rant. That's my overall market summary. We're gonna go through a lot of specific projects next. Uh, we're at the 20 minute mark, which is a little over from the what I was anticipating. So um, thank you for those who are watching on YouTube. Uh, we'll see you next time. And those from the newsletter, uh, subscriber base, stay tuned.